In calculus, Rolle's theorem or Rolle's lemma essentially states that any real valued differentiable function that attains equal values at two distinct points must have at least one stationary point somewhere between them that is, a point where the first derivative the slope of the tangent line to the graph of the function is zero. <laughs> Standard version of the theorem If a real valued function f is continuous on a proper closed interval a, b, differentiable on the open interval a, b, and f a equals f b, then there exists at least one c in the open interval a, b, such that f c equals zero. Display style f c equals zero. This version of Rolle's theorem is used to prove the mean value theorem, of which Rolle's theorem is indeed a special case. It is also the basis for the proof of Taylor's theorem. History Indian mathematician Bhaskara II is credited with knowledge of Rolle's theorem. Although the theorem is named after Michel Rolle, Rolle's 1691 proof covered only the case of polynomial functions. His proof did not use the methods of differential calculus, which at that point in his life he considered to be fallacious. The theorem was first proved by Cauchy in 1823 as a corollary of a proof of the mean value theorem. The name, Rolle's theorem, was first used by Moritz Wilhelm Drobisch of Germany in 1834 and by Giusto Bellavitis of Italy in 1846. Examples First example For a radius r greater than zero, consider the function f x equals r two minus x two x element of minus r r display style f x equals s q r t r caret two x caret two quad x in r r. Its graph is the upper semicircle centered at the origin. This function is continuous on the closed interval minus r r and differentiable in the open interval minus r r, but not differentiable at the endpoints minus r and r. Since f minus r equals f r Rolle's theorem applies and indeed there is a point where the derivative of f is zero note that the theorem applies even when the function cannot be differentiated at the endpoints because it only requires the function to be differentiable in the open interval equals <laughs> topic second example equals <laughs> If differentiability fails at an interior point of the interval, the conclusion of Rolle's theorem may not hold. Consider the absolute value function f x equals x x element of minus one one. Display style f x equals x q quad x in minus one one. Then f minus one. Topic f one, but there is no c between minus one and one for which the f c is zero. This is because that function, although continuous, is not differentiable at x zero. Note that the derivative of f changes its sign at x equals zero, but without attaining the value zero. The theorem cannot be applied to this function because it does not satisfy the condition that the function must be differentiable for every x in the open interval. 
However, when the differentiability requirement is dropped from Rolle's theorem, f will still have a critical number in the open interval a, b, but it may not yield a horizontal tangent as in the case of the absolute value represented in the graph. Generalization the second example illustrates the following generalization of Rolle's theorem. Consider a real valued, continuous function f on a closed interval a, b, with f a equals f b. If for every x in the open interval a, b, the right-hand limit f x plus equals lim h 0 plus F x plus H minus F x H display style F x caret plus equals lim underscore H to zero caret plus frac F x plus H F x H and the left hand limit F x minus equals Lim H zero minus F x plus H minus F x H display style F x caret equals Lim underscore H to zero caret frac F x plus H F x H exist in the extended real line minus infinity infinity then there is some number c in the open interval a b such that one of the two limits f c plus and f c minus display style f c caret plus quad text and quad f c caret is zero and the other one is zero in the extended real line. If the right and left hand limits agree for every x, then they agree in particular for c, hence the derivative of f exists at c and is equal to zero. Topic remarks If f is convex or concave, then the right and left hand derivatives exist at every inner point, hence the above limits exist and are real numbers. This generalized version of the theorem is sufficient to prove convexity when the one-sided derivatives are monotonically increasing f x minus f x plus f y minus x y display style f x caret l e q f x caret plus l e q f y caret q quad x. Topic: Proof of the generalized version. Since the proof for the standard version of Rolle's theorem and the generalization are very similar, we prove the generalization. The idea of the proof is to argue that if f a equals f b, then f must attain either a maximum or a minimum somewhere between a and b, say at c, and the function must change from increasing to decreasing or the other way around at c. In particular, if the derivative exists, it must be zero at c. By assumption, f is continuous on a, b, and by the extreme value theorem attains both its maximum and its minimum in a, b. If these are both attained at the endpoints of a, b, then f is constant on a, b, and so the derivative of f is zero at every point in a, b. Suppose then that the maximum is obtained at an interior point c of a, b. The argument for the minimum is very similar. Just consider minus f. We shall examine the above right and left hand limits separately. For a real h such that c plus h is in a, b, the value f c plus h is smaller or equal to f c because f attains its maximum at c. Therefore, for every h greater than zero, f c plus h minus f c h. Zero. Display style frac f c plus h f c h l e q zero. Hence, f 
C plus equals lim H zero plus F C plus H minus F C H zero Display style f c caret plus equals lim underscore h to zero caret plus frac f c plus h f c h l e q zero, where the limit exists by assumption, it may be minus infinity. Similarly, for every h f c plus h minus f c h zero, display style frac f c plus h f c h g e q zero, hence f c minus equals lim h zero minus f c plus h minus f c h zero, display style f c caret equals lim underscore h to zero caret frac f c plus h f c h g e q zero, where the limit might b plus infinity finally when the above right and left hand limits agree in particular when f is differentiable then the derivative of f at c must be zero alternatively we can apply fermat's stationary point theorem directly topic generalization to higher derivatives we can also generalize rolle's theorem by requiring that f has more points with equal values and greater regularity Specifically, suppose that the function f is n minus one times continuously differentiable on the closed interval a, b, and the nth derivative exists on the open interval a, b, and there are n intervals given by a one. The requirements concerning the nth derivative of f can be weakened, as in the generalization above, giving the corresponding possibly weaker assertions for the right and left hand limits defined above with f n minus one in place of f. Particularly, this version of the theorem asserts that if a function differentiable enough times has n roots so they have the same value, that is zero, then there is an internal point where f n vanishes. Proof The proof uses mathematical induction. The case n Topic. One is simply the standard version of Rolle's theorem. As the induction hypothesis, assume the generalization is true for n minus 1. We want to prove it for n greater than 1. By the standard version of Rolle's theorem, for every integer k from 1 to n, there exists a c k in the open interval ac b k such that f c k. Zero. Hence, the first derivative satisfies the assumptions on the n minus one closed intervals c one, c two, c n minus one, c n. By the induction hypothesis, there is a c such that the north minus one Saint derivative of f at c is zero. Topic generalizations to other fields. Rolle's theorem is a property of differentiable functions over the real numbers, which are an ordered field. As such, it does not generalize to other fields, but the following corollary does: if a real polynomial factors has all of its roots over the real numbers, then its derivative does as well. One may call this property of a field Rolle's property. More general fields do not always have differentiable functions, but they do always have polynomials, which can be symbolically differentiated. Similarly, more general fields may not have an order, but one has a notion of a root of a polynomial lying in a field. Thus Rolle's theorem shows that the real numbers have Rolle's property. Any algebraically closed field such as the complex numbers has Rolle's property. However, the rational numbers do not, for example, x3 minus x equals x x minus 1 x plus 1 factors over the rationals, but its derivative, 3 by 2 minus 1 equals 3 x minus 1 3 x plus 1 3 display style 3 x caret 2 minus 1 equals 3 left x tfrac 1 sqrt 3 right left x plus tfrac 1 sqrt 3 right does not. The question of which fields satisfy Rolle's property was raised in Kaplansky 1972. 
For finite fields, the answer is that only F2 and F4 have Rolle's property. This was first proven via technical means in Craven and Sorda's 1977, and a simple proof is given in Ballantine and Roberts 2002. For a complex version, see Vorhoff index. Topic. See also. Mean value theorem. Intermediate value theorem Linear interpolation Gauss–Lucas theorem Notes <laughs> <laughs>